All right, so today's video is going to be a little different. We're going to be revisiting an old interview that Ben Shapiro did with the BBC, and we're going to examine what is said in this interview by Ben Shapiro. Uh, ben Shapiro, you're followed by millions of people online and on social media. You're one of the biggest names in American... Also, um, just, this is a quick side note, but can we just talk about how unprofessional and how smug Ben Shapiro is being at the beginning of this interview? Like, dude, you're on TV. You're on the BBC and you're on your laptop like you're not even engaged and then by the end of this interview you'll see that ben shapiro doesn't take any of this shit seriously at all he's a complete fucking joke but it's like dude you're not even engaged in the interview so how am i gonna take you seriously it'd be like someone that's gonna do an interview on like cnn and they're just like texting on their phone in the middle of the interview like dude put your fucking laptop away be engaged this is why this interview turned so badly for him uh ben shapiro you're followed by millions of people online and on social media you're one of the biggest names in american conservatism what is it you think you're tapping into well i think that there are, there are a couple of things one there is actually a hunger for different ideas the the monolithic nature of the united states media is pretty evident in terms of its politics people tend to agree on yeah. essentially the liberal point of view and increasingly a, a radical leftist point of view in the media no no. No. I like how he mentions the monolithic nature of U United States news media and says that the, the majority of people just pretty much just agree with a liberal point of view, at least when it comes to uh, mainstream media. No, Ben. No. Why does Tucker Carlson beat out every other late night host? He gets averages like 3 million viewers a night, beats out all the other cable channels. Ben, that's the facts literally prove you wrong. I don't even have this pulled up because I didn't even think about this, but we'll just, we'll, we'll look it up just so you guys can see it. Um, it's, again, it's Tucker Carlson. Uh, this isn't the greatest source, but any source you look up, this is a Forbes article. He is the mo highest rated cable news host. Fox News beats out all the other channels. Ben Shapiro, what are you fucking talking about? It, it's so untrue. And then he he's saying it, it's, it's a monolithic in nature. You have the Daily Wire. It's huge. What is he talking about? And obviously I speak to, in response to that. At the same time, uh, I try to provide an honest take on the issues of the day, and that means that I'm not beholden to the Republican Party, for example. Uh, it means that I'm going to speak out whenever I think that a principle is being violated, just no matter who is doing the violation. Not true at all. I mean, again, historically we know that Ben Shapiro does not speak out when uh, principles that he are opposed to are displayed, uh, You know, especially when it's Republicans that are doing it. Again, Donald Trump, as a human being, is pretty much everything that Ben Shapiro claims he doesn't like, but Trump embodies all of those qualities to a T. You worked for the right-wing Breitbart website, uh, but you left over its support for Donald Trump. And I think you said you'd never vote for Mr. Trump. Why is that? Well, in 2015, uh, 2016, the Breitbart made a, a hard turn in favor of one particular candidate, and that's their prerogative. Lots of publications have an editorial point of view, and Breitbart was one of those. The reason that I left Breitbart specifically was because it was because of an incident in which a Breitbart reporter, female reporter, was grabbed on the arm by Corey Lewandowski, then the campaign manager for President Trump, uh, and was bruised on the arm, and then Corey Lewandowski proceeded to lie about it, and Breitbart proceeded to throw its own reporter under the bus, suggest that she was lying or making this up. And at that point, I determined that I could no longer work for a publication that wasn't even willing to stand up for its own reporters, and instead would throw those reporters under the bus in favor of a candidate that it sought to back uh you know in all of my research on ben shapiro over the years i um i think that that is really the reason that he did leave breitbart he also had a plan to start his own media company so he would have left breitbart at some point i feel like he just uses that reasoning to say well look i left this um super alt-right news publication uh you know because of their support for trump it's not because of their support for Trump. Uh, you know, it could be for this reason that he's stating that he always had a plan. He always had it in his mind that he was going to go on on to start this media company. And not always, but at a certain point, Ben Shapiro decided that he was going to create the Daily Wire. Haven't you lost your battle for the Republican Party, though? Isn't the Republican Party now the party of Trump? And this was done. This 
This interview is from 2019, and I cannot tell you guys how correct that statement is today on, what day is it? March 19th, 2023. The Republican Party has absolutely, and even at the time of this interview back in 2019, but even more so now, absolutely the party of Donald J. Trump. One million percent. There are just... You, that's just a fact you cannot argue against. It is Trump, Trump, Trump. The Republican Party is literally the party of Trump. No, I mean, I think that the Republican Party is always the party of whomever is the president, technically speaking. But in terms of who are the sort of the thought leaders inside the conservative movement, who are the people who are driving a lot of the discussion inside the conservative movement? I don't think that's correct at all. I think that most Republicans see President Trump as a vehicle for their policy preferences. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they agree with all of his personal foibles or the way that he behaves or the things that he says. And I They really do, though. I mean, they do. Anytime Donald Trump would get like, uh, you know, they were the media would write on like, you know, his terrible tweets or, you know, just the nasty shit that he would say about reporters or just about anybody in general. Everybody's like the media attacks Trump, this and that. Yes, they do, Ben. They love his uh, uh, his personal attacks on people. They love his his Twitter. Think about when Donald Trump's Twitter got banned. The shit storm. Ben, just everything you're saying about Trump is just untrue. Live in the real world, Ben. I think a lot of Republicans respond in anger to the media attacking President Trump mainly out of a, a reactionary and half appropriate upset that the media seem to have a double standard when it comes to covering certain politicians. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess. But how many politicians on the left are as outspoken as the ones on the right? How many people are as outspoken as people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and Donald Trump? How many of them are super extreme like that? Answer that for me, Ben. Can you explain that to me? Where, where is the reporting on the other side of the aisle for that? It doesn't exist because those people don't exist in that way on the left. I'm interested that you think there's a thought movement inside the Republican Party. I mean, haven't the conservatives uh, run out of ideas in America? All the new policies, the Medicare for all, $15 minimum wage, the Green New Deal, they're all coming from the left and they're popular. Well, Frank <laughs> I just I just love that Andrew Neal is just like conservatives are fucking stupid and the left knows what's up. I mean, I know that, you know, he's way more well spoken than that. But it's pretty much what he said. I loved it. I mean, frankly, I'm confused by the idea that any of those are, are particularly new ideas. I mean, most of those ideas have been around since Franklin Delano Roosevelt at the very earliest or at the very latest. Rather, some of so he's saying that fifteen dollar minimum wage, Medicare for all, um, you know, things like that, the Green New Deal. He's saying that those aren't new ideas. That's what Ben Shapiro said. You heard what he said. These aren't new ideas because they've been around since FDR. Let's continue. Them go all the way back to Woodrow Wilson. But the idea that new ideas are absent in the Republican Party is obviously untrue. We have a, a very strong debate that goes on inside sort of the, the conservative halls of intelligentsia uh, about what is the appropriate action to take with regard. I'm sorry. This man said the conservative halls of intelligentsia. I'm supposed to take this guy seriously. And he said the conservative halls of intelligentsia. I mean, just if I went on the BBC or, you know, any big mainstream news outlet for an interview and said something like the progressive halls or, uh, the the democratic halls of intelligentsia do you know what the conservative media would do to to any any person who a democrat a progressive or a leftist whatever said something like that do you know what kind of shitstorm would ensue if someone said something like that the conservative halls of intelligentsia and i'm supposed to take this guy seriously okay are to the medical system should global warming be considered uh, a real threat or should global warming be, be considered something that technology will solve? And if so, what are the best, best aspects of, of solving that? Now, there's a, there's a rich intellectual debate on the right about nationalism versus patriotism, for example. No, there's not. There's literally no debate about nationalism or patriotism. Republicans, conservatives, outright uh, are out, very outspoken ones, they literally say that they don't care about that difference. They think that nationalism is a good thing. That's just not true, Ben example, or populism versus free marketeerism. That debate is happening on the right to, to sort of suggest that it's the, not happening on the right. What the fuck is he talking right about? in America is bereft of ideas, but the left is full of ideas. Number one, not all ideas are good ideas. I mean, AOC is pretty good evidence of that. Doesn't provide any evidence of that. He says that AOC is um, proof that not all ideas are good ideas, but um, 
This is something you guys can go and look up, and I'm not going to pull this up right now uh, for just for time purposes. But if you guys look at all of the elected officials for districts in the United States, you go and look at their track records. AOC, I, and I don't live in New York. I've only been in New York one time in my life. Uh, AOC, she legitimately actually listens to her constituents and their needs and she tries her 100% best to try and meet the needs of her constituents. And you guys can see that in her, uh, her, her track record. It's literally reflected in such. You guys can see in how she carries herself and what she decides to talk about, issues that she decides to tackle, especially when she has so much opposition, even from her own party. You know, to say that AOC, not not all ideas are good ideas, Ben, she's like one of the politicians that is a actually does her fucking job and does it well. I'm, I'm a big fan of some old ideas myself that I think are, are pretty good, but... Now remember, now you guys heard what he said before, that $15 minimum wage and Medicare for All and Green New Deal, those are old ideas, but Ben Shapiro is saying that he's fan, he's a fan of old ideas, so... What are where what are the new ideas? He didn't he, where are the new ideas? Cuz he said that Medicare for all, Green New Deal, all of them, those are old ideas, they're not new, but Ben Shapiro says he's a fan of old ideas. So that means that Ben Shapiro's a fan of these seemingly progressive policies that uh, he doesn't think are new, but he said he's a fan of old ideas. So Ben is according to what he's saying here, apparently, you know, pro Medicare for all. He's Pro Green New Deal. He's, um, you know, uh, whatever else you guys want to say. Beyond that, he said it. I think that it is, it is intellectual, uh, intellectual sneering of the highest order to suggest that only the left has, has new and decent ideas. Some intellectual sneering of the highest order to say that uh, the right is not full of new ideas. Do you guys hear this type of language that he uses? He tries to use these... these 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 terms intellectual sneering of the highest order it's not intellectual sneering if it's fact of the high it's not intellectual sneering of the highest order if what he's saying is true it is true what are the new ideas that the conservative party has put forth i'll listen i'll wait guys if you're a conservative if you're a republican watching this video go down and tell me right now uh, what new ideas conservatives, the conservative party specifically, is, uh, you know, talking about? Of the Where's that conversation? that are popular in your side of politics uh, would seem to take us back to the Dark Ages, Georgia, new abortion laws, uh, which you are much in favor of, uh, that uh, a woman who miscarries could get 30 years. A Georgian woman who travels to another state for an abortion procedure could get 10 years. These are extreme hard policies. Well, okay. and something that Ben Shapiro fails to understand um, is that the conservatives in America would be like super far right in a lot of European countries, right? And a lot of other parts of the world, the Democratic Party over here would be on the right. Like if we were in a Scandinavian country, for example, the conservative party would be super far on the right, and even the Democratic Party in this country would still be right, because that's how progressive these other countries are. Ben doesn't understand that. Ben does not get that. He's not educated enough, apparently, to know that, which I, I don't understand how, because the motherfucker went to Harvard, but Ben is not willing to accept, or at least, I, I, I mean, he's not willing to acknowledge it, at least in this interview, the fact that, again, uh, American politics... The conservative side of American politics is so far conservative. Again, if we were in another country, the Democratic Party would be considered the conservative party. That's how conservative the American conservative party is. A couple of things. One, I'm not sure. I mean, frankly, I don't know whether you're... Are you an objective journalist or are you an opinion journalist? I'm a journalist that asks questions. And then he just, he just gets... He just... He lets his emotions drive him for the rest of this interview. It's just emotionally charged Ben Shapiro. Are you an objective journalist? It's like, dude, why? It doesn't matter if he's an objective journalist or not. You're not an objective journalist, number one. I don't think Ben Shapiro has researched about Andrew Neil, but Andrew Neil has 
pretty much been doing this for a long fucking time. Much longer than Ben Shapiro has been doing it. So to ask a stupid question like that is just ridiculous. Like, Ben, he's asking questions. You answer them. He's trying to make this a debate. It's not a debate. It's an interview. And you're making yourself look like an ass. Or he did make himself okay, so look like an ass. You're a supposedly objective journalist calling policies with which you disagree barbaric and no, suggesting I, only one side of the political aisle no, has ideas. So I just want to point out that no, I, I wish you would, I, I wish I, you at least be honest in your own biases. Mr. Shapiro, so, I wish you would at least be honest in your own biases. Ben, what do you want him to do? Just come out? Just They put the camera on him and then uh, you know he just sits there and he's like, I'm, I'm pro this, I'm anti that, I'm pro this, I'm anti that. That's not what it is, Ben. That's what he wants. The thing in America is now so polarized that on one program. Uh, and this is also just proof that, you know, um, these American conservative hog-brained uh, uh, pseudo-intellectual fucks, uh, they have just have such a one-dimensional way of thinking. It either You either have to be for something or you have to be against it. There's no in-between. There's no exceptions. There's no nothing. You're either pro something 100% unabashedly or you are completely against it all of the time, 100% of the time. And it's you dumb. only have the left and another one, you just have the right. My job well, is to question those who have strong views and put an alternative to them. If you are an anti- I'm, 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 He literally just described what it's like to be a good interviewer. Andrew Neil is breaking this down for Ben Shapiro in little kid terms. He's literally babying Ben through this interview and he still fumbles. Ben still fucks it up. He is literally holding your hand, walking you through this interview, Ben. He's he just told you exactly what this is supposed to be like, and you're still, you're still going to act like this. I'm if well, you were an anti-abortion well person, I would be putting pro-abortion questions to you, but you are really, would you, would you, would you, Yes, really, Ben. Yes, really. The pro -choice so, so, so why don't so you just answer you my question? Sir? I also like how he, at the beginning he was talking about the monolithic nature of the United States of media, and then he gets on here and wants to... <laughs> so dumb. It's insanely dumb. I'm happy to answer your question. Please answer this one. Would you suggest? Would you suggest that a late-term abortion is brutal? I'm not taking is a view on this issue. I'm asking late -term you the questions, sir. You just suggested the pro-life position is inherently brutal and terrible. So I'm asking you. That's not really what he said, though. He didn't say that the pro-life. Uh, he didn't say that the pro-life position is barbaric. He was specifically talking about policies in the state of Georgia that he said were extremely hard policies and he also literally said that because ben shapiro is pro-abortion he is asking him anti-abortion questions what does he not get about this how thick is his skull that these words are not registering in his brain as an objective journalist would you ask the same question well, to a pro-choice advocate by well, calling their position I'm, brutal what and i'm adorable? asking you is that why is it that a bill banning abortion it's just it's so it's it's the it's the terminology and the vocabulary that andrew's using that's that's hurting ben's fifis over here he really got butt hurt over that and he like he you can't you can even see it in his face i mean he's like mad after a woman has been pregnant for six weeks is not a return to the dark ages what's your answer my answer is something called science. Human life exists at conception. It ought to be protected. Now, back to my question to you. You purport to be an objective journalist. BBC purports to be an objective down-the-middle network. It <laughs> yeah, go on the attack on the BBC. That, um, I'm sure that's going to work out great for it Ben. It obviously is not. It never has been. And you, as a journalist, are proceeding to call one side of the political aisle ignorant, barbaric, and sending us back to the dark ages. Again, uh, Ben, is, I, I don't know if he's just... I, just trying to, you know, play it up for the cameras. You know, this went viral, so you know, maybe that was his goal. Just his end goal was just how viral can I make this fucking shit go? But then, I don't know why you're failing to understand that in other countries, the Democratic Party in this country would be considered conservative all the way, all the way. Like, what do you not get about that? He's just so he's so mad about this barbaric word. Or these, this dark ages terminology that Andrew Neil used when talking about this abortion stuff. It's just like, he's so upset about that. He can't move past it. And it just makes him look, it just, it just makes him look weak. It just makes Ben look like he can't actually, uh, number one, again, it's, he's trying to make it a debate when it's not. But it makes, it really shows that Ben Shapiro isn't a great debater. Because when he is forcing Andrew Neil into a debate, he's still losing it. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh, is this so hard for you? Why can't you? Why don't you? <laughs> That's exactly.
exactly what I said. You guys remember what I said earlier. Ben Shapiro just wants Andrew Neal to come on and just be like, this is exactly where I stand on each one of these issues. It's like, Ben, that's not what it is. And look at him laughing. He's having so much fun. I am too. Just be honest. <laughs> Mr. Shapiro. It's a serious question. Yeah, it's, it's a serious question. I'm glad me and Andrew found this. I'm, I'm, I hope you guys are laughing too. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let and then he just destroyed him just so casually, and then he just moves on. He's like, you know, he, he he's, he's just, he just moves right on past it. Can you just be honest? <laughs> Mr. Seriously, Shapiro, I, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let's move on. Um <laughs> I, I, I legitimately think he doesn't get it. That makes, it, that makes it even funnier. It's pretty Trump, evident from your own you questions exactly Mr. what you are, sir. Trump, Would you vote for Mr. Trump in 2020? I'd certainly consider voting for Mr. Trump in 2020, just like I'd consider voting for anybody else in 2020. Uh, but didn't you once say that you'd never vote for him? I said that I wouldn't vote for him in 2016. And then I wrote a column for National Review explaining the conditions under oh, which I might change my mind. National You're a, a culture war warrior. Isn't he largely on your side? You, you yes. wrote once it was unlikely he'd appoint conservative judges to the Supreme Court. He had He only support he only what, two, three? I can't yes. even remember the number. Right. So you true. were wrong. And so I'm at, I, I like many of President Trump's policies, even if I still have serious reservations about his personality and character. Do you think there's a Democrat that could beat him in twenty twenty? Sure, I think there are several Democrats who could beat him in twenty twenty. This is one of the only things in this interview that he says that is actually correct and right. Who would have the best chance? I think that Joe Biden is likeliest to beat him, considering that he has significant appeal in a lot of the Rust Belt in places like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin in the place that the president Trump needs to win to retain the presidency. And that's actually, uh, that's very accurate. That's a very accurate assessment. 100% agree with that. Never thought I'd be saying that, but 100% right, Ben Shapiro. Got that one right. Joe Biden also has a long history in politics, which means that the American people already have sort of a preconceived vision of him. President Trump as a campaigner is very good at dragging unknowns through the mud mm. uh, or at exposing details about people that are previously sort of covered up. But when it comes to Joe Biden, he's been well exposed for a very long time. Most people know him, and he's not nearly as unpopular even going in as Hillary Clinton was in 2016. So if it was a close race... Just remember, just remember that Donald Trump lost the popular vote two times, both times. Case between Mr. Once Biden. by three million votes and a second time by a Biden lot more. Mr. Trump, you would, from what you say, I think, probably go for Mr. Trump. Yes, I would vote for Mr. Trump if it were a race between Biden and Trump, because I think that the damage that President Trump has done to the country on a character and rhetorical level has already been done and cannot be undone. I don't see it as getting worse day by day. That is the news. And that's just like Ben Shapiro's logic for why he's going to vote for Donald Trump here uh, is one, because he agrees with his policies. But two, he's saying that, uh, you know, Trump has literally done so much damage to the image of our country that it is literally irreparable from forever. And it will never, ever be able to be fixed because of how much of a shitty person Donald Trump is and how he acts. That's literally what he said. It's a pretty terrible logic, I feel like, to vote for somebody. That's just me. That is quo, unfortunately. Now the question becomes which policies I would most like to see enacted, and Trump's policy preferences are closer to my own than Joe Biden's are. Sure now, you're are. a star of new media, conservative new media. Uh, you and others on the left and the right, you position yourselves as supposed tellers of hard truths. But haven't you all just really coarsened public discourse in America and exacerbated its divisions? Yes. I mean, Andrew Neal is... These are really, really good questions, I feel like. I never know, like, really listened to them before now, but I feel like these are some really good questions. You know, it's kind of odd to be, to be hearing about me coarsening public discourse when you call policies you disagree with. The answer to that question... Um, from Ben Shapiro is uh, big fat. Yes, I did do that, and his answer here is evidence of what he thinks. Brutal and bringing us back to the dark ages, sir. Uh, the point I don't want to return to, but the point was to put a position for you to reply to it, and I thought we covered that. that. that that's, well, I, I'll, I'll I think that you, <laughs> he said I thought we covered that. Like, are you following? Like, is he like sure, literally treating him like a child? Your characterization of issues is part of the problem in the well, coarsening of public debate. Well, maybe it's also. Is it, though? Because, again, Ben, you go outside of the United States of America and the characterization of these issues, it would be one million percent different if you were in a country like Germany or you were in a country like Sweden. It's just, again, he's just, he's so far 
uh, just cemented in exactly what he thinks and he knows and he believes. And he, he can't he can't even like uh, I don't want to say empathize. I, I don't know what the word would be, but he, it's like he can't even think about anything else other than these conservative ideals that he has. Your problem too, because we have from your YouTube videos, Ben Shapiro destroys this the This is my favorite part. Argument. Ben Shapiro destroys trans transgenderism and abortion. Is that not a kind of coarse public discourse? It is. Well, are those videos labeled by me? <laughs> I have no idea. But why are you picking out? Why are, why are you? Why are you? I have a question. Why are you picking out random YouTube videos are, put up by people who are not me? Are you attributing uh, the titles to me? Are you? So you guys hear what Ben Shapiro said? You hear what he said? Why would Andrew Neil pick out random YouTube videos not posted by Ben Shapiro and say that they're posted by Ben Shapiro? But all I had to do uh, for facts don't care about your feelings is um, go on my YouTube and search. Uh, Ben Shapiro destroys transgenderism and pro-abortion arguments. And would you guys look at the channel that posted this video? Ah, who is it? None other than the Daily Wire's YouTube channel. Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire channel. This looks pretty legit to me. Unless there's a second Daily Wire channel that's a fraud that has 3 million subscribers, 7,000 videos, has a banner, all the other socials linked. Very legit. Extremely legit. And there it is again. You guys see it. Ben Shapiro destroys transgenderism. Ben Shapiro destroys pro-abortion arguments. This is posted from Ben Shapiro. So, Ben, are you really, like, did you really not do your homework on the shit that you posted and you had your team post? How does an interviewer vet the stuff that you yourself posted better than you? This is Ben Shapiro, uh, at least I've seen people call him this, is the thought leader in the conservative movement. The thought leader in the conservative movement is literally too stupid to know which videos he literally posted onto his own publication's YouTube channel. Those are literally videos that he posted that are attributed to him because he fucking titled them that. And he knows he titled them that. Unhappy with the way they've been described. I, I meant... I meant uh, he titled them that, and he doesn't know, uh, or he apparently doesn't know that he titled them that. I think that people can describe me however they please. It's a free country, and I'm all in favor of a public, of a public debate. If you watch the actual clips, they are generally civil conversations between me and somebody who disagrees with me. You say, uh, I mean, again, you know, if he says if you watch the clips, then they are generally uh, him discussing, you know, stuff with people that generally disagree with him. But Ben Shapiro does, and something that he's, you know, that. Andrew Neal doesn't ask him about, but he doesn't explain in this clip, is that uh, he goes to college campuses um, and debates uh, college students that are not nearly as prepared as he is and are also, again, just random college students. You see Ben Shapiro, you know, go on something like they say Ben Shapiro debates people on the left all the time and they like to use Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan is not a leftist in any way, shape or form, especially not now. And they say, oh, he debated uh, Schenck uh, uh, of the Young Turks. He did that one time. And then, um, you know, people like to say, uh, you know, oh, he, you know, he debates Anna Kasparian. Uh, you know, and yeah, he does debate Anna Kasparian. And that those debates are, they're, they're good. And, you know, they're really well spoken. But Ben Shapiro pretty much just debates these random college students. So... If you guys were to, which I wouldn't recommend you do, go and click on Ben Shapiro destroys transgenderism and pro-abortion arguments, uh, you know, you know, it's just going to be, he says it's people that disagree with me. No, it's just random college students. You showed up to their campus and, you know, you're making this content saying Ben Shapiro destroys this and that. You're debating random college kids, you know. It's not, you knew, he acts like he's like, debating the progressive thought leaders, you know, thought leaders on the left, people that, uh, you know, are like Ben Shapiro, but are progressives, uh, but he's not. Look, uh, you suggest that America's largest struggle at the moment is, quote, the struggle for our national soul. We are so angry at each other right now. And I, I think that's true. I've just returned from the United States. But aren't you part of the problem with the way you go about your discourse? Not the solution? Yes. Solution? I think we can all do better in our discourse, but the fact that I've reached out to so many people across the aisle to have conversations with them is pretty evident. The fact that I was willing to walk from a publication that was paying me money over principle is pretty evident. The fact that I've called uh, out... See, like, that makes me think that what I said earlier about him always uh, 
you know, having that thought of starting his own publication, The Daily Wire, in the back of his mind, even when he worked at Breitbart, that just makes me think it, believe it even more. He says, I left a publication that was paying me money. I hope they were paying you money. You are editor at large at Breitbart. I should hope that they were paying you money. But it just makes me think that, you know, uh, he always had that thought in the back of his mind because it's weird for him to bring that up as an argument. That's just a strange a thing. President Trump, a member of a party of which I am a member repeatedly when I think that he has done things that are immoral, I think is decent evidence that I'm looking at least for a civil conversation. Well, you, as you say in your book, you say that there's quite a key phrase, we are so angry at each other right now. But as I say, aren't you part of that anger? Aren't you encouraging that anger? For example, you, des you described Mr. Obama's State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist mentality in action. Mm. Well, I think that if you, are, if you want to argue with the characterization, then we can talk about what exactly his State of the Union address said. Is it charged language in politics? Sure. The problem that I have is not with charged language in politics, which I no, no. He kind of goes off on these rants. It's like he can't really answer the question. He's just kind of ranting. It's not a... I guess it's kind of... The question he asked him, you know, he was asking about, you know, uh, the public discourse and, you know, how we can, you know, try to be better in that. And Ben Shapiro's talking about, like, you know, he says charged language isn't the problem in politics, which it's kind of not really what he asked. I'm generally in favor of. I like a robust public debate and a very loud and, and, and spirited public debate. I have no problem with that whatsoever. What I'm talking about is the assumption that people with whom we disagree politically are inherently of bad character or, in your words, want to bring us back but, to the dark ages. But again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. I, I like, I, I, he, Ben, Ben, you just described he just described something that he says he doesn't agree with, but then he did it. That's... Want to bring us back to the Dark Ages. But again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. And he just got done explaining that he doesn't think that people that disagree with him politically, uh, you know, should be called certain things or, ha uh, you know, say they return to the Dark Ages. But then he's called Obama, Obama's 2012 State of the Union address uh, a fascist. He said it was fascist. Uh, a fascist mentality or whatever. And then it's like, I mean, calling Obama fascist is crazy, number one. But, like, isn't that what you just said you didn't want? Everything he says, Trump's everything that he says is, uh, again, you know, it's just a projection. ...of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. That's the wording of, of President Trump's 2012 address was bad and wrong. That's all. There's plenty of things... Um, I think he meant to say President Obama there. He said President Trump's 2012 State of the Union address was bad and wrong. Kind of makes me think, you know, he's he's got this, uh, you know, I don't know, weird double standard, but and we know he does. Wrong, but, but it doesn't make them fascist. Will he admit it? Well, I suppose that's true. But if you would like to, again, if you'd like to read me the column out loud, I suppose I can critique it for you. Oh, well, again, with Mr. Obama, you said... Jew, and you're, you're Jewish yourself. I only mention that because to put this in context. The Jews who vote for Obama are, by and large, Jews in name only. Ginos, you call them. My statement was based on the fact that Jews in the United States, as an ethnic group, are largely irreligious, which is true by every single poll. Jews are the most irreligious group in the United States as an Orthodox Jew who actually... So, Ben Shapiro's uh, defense for him calling uh, Jews that voted for President Obama only Jews by name is the fact that uh, Jews in America are largely irreligious. That part is true. If you guys look that up, Jews in America are largely irreligious, especially compared to, like, American Christians. That's true, but that doesn't make any sense for why you would say something like that. Like, that's a fact, and I feel like that's what Ben Shapiro does a lot is— he says something that's problematic or wrong, or he ha he says he tries to give uh, uh, the best take on it possible. He says something like that at the beginning of the interview. Um, he he says things like that. Obama Obama State of the Union address is fascist, uh, and if you're a Jew and you vote for him, then you're only a Jew by name. And then instead of you know uh, retracting what he says or you know uh, walking back his comments, he just he throws out some random fact and said, well, I was saying this because of that. And it's like, okay, well, you got, I mean, that fact is, is not wrong, but it doesn't really make sense for you justifying what you said. It do, that doesn't make sense. Like you're not wrong about that fact. Yes. But how does that, how is that a defense? How is that your reasoning 
for saying something like that. It doesn't make sense. He takes Judaism seriously. The point that I'm making is that most... Just, just so you guys do know, because I don't want anyone to think, you know, it's just, I have this... Um, U.S. Jews are, this is Pew Research Center, are less likely than Christians to attend religious services weekly. Ben Shapiro was right in what he said. Any poll you look at, Jews are largely uh, the most irreligious group in the United States, but that still has nothing to do with you know what was being said. Jews who are ethnically Jewish are not religiously Jewish no. in any context. No, no, no. The point you were making is that Jews who vote for Obama yeah, are see, Jews in name only. See, I, that's what a Andrew knows. Andrew knows. He's said, smart enough to that, know. Yes, that is correct. That Jews who voted for Barack Obama, a progenitor of the Iran deal, a person who was cracking down on religious liberty, a person who spent... Um, no. No. Much of his career as president of the United States attempting to deprive Israel of the necessities to defend itself. So he said two things there, and we're going to examine those two claims because I, they are 100% wrong. So he says that Obama is was attacking religious freedom. The only thing that I can think of when he says that uh, Obama is attacking religious freedom is when he signed the International Religious Freedom Bill. Um, and this is uh, pretty much a bill that stated that you do not have to subscribe to a uh, religion and you know if you want to be an atheist or you don't want to just you just want to be someone that doesn't subscribe to any of the religions that you have that right you have the right to identify as an atheist that's what he's referring to because there's like literally nothing obama did regarding religion at least not a whole lot of policy this is the only thing this is what he's referring to and it's not an attack on religious freedom it's actually expanding religious freedom. Ben Shapiro, for some reason, doesn't think like that. But he also said that Obama spent the majority of his presidency, you know, uh, going against Israel, uh, you know, and Ben Shapiro is one of those people that thinks that, uh, you know, Palestine belongs to Israel. I'm not going to get into that debate right now because we would be here all fucking day and this video is already long. Um, but um, it's just not true. He says that Ben uh Obama has been spent his presidency depriving Israel of what they needed. Right when Obama was leaving, uh, his his tenure is in office as president. He uh, literally gave Israel a thirty eight billion dollar military aid package. And if you guys look this up, it is the largest pa uh, military aid package in U.S. history. President Obama gave Israel thirty eight billion dollars in military aid. It is literally the largest military aid we have ever given to anybody, period. And he wants to sit there and say that Obama was, uh, 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 you know, not pro-Israel. Bullshit, okay? And uh, Obama also was responsible for uh, Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system, which you guys may have heard of that, you might have not. But to say that Obama uh, was sitting there trying to strip Israel of whatever, or tr he wasn't pro-Israel, that's fucking bullshit. That is literally the biggest bullshit I've ever heard, okay? It's just it's just a lie. It's just a fucking lie. That that people Jews who voted for President Obama by and large cared about Judaism far less than they did about other priorities. Did you say they should Correct. turn their badge in as a Jew? Uh, yes, I believe that if you are a, I believe that if you are somebody who takes Judaism seriously, that comes along with ideological, ideological commitment. I mean, I so he says that if you're someone that you ta that takes Judaism seriously, that comes along with ideological commitment. So uh, I went to a Christian school my whole life, a Christian school from kindergarten to twelfth grade, baby. And uh, Donald Trump, at least from what I learned from the Bible and what I see, Donald Trump is Donald Trump is uh, the embodiment of everything that Christ is not. He is literally the most anti-Christ person that I can think of in American politics. That man is literally evil. I don't like to use that word lightly, but Donald Trump is literally one of the uh, worst human beings to ever grace this earth, especially to become president. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I see so many Christians use this thing of, uh, you know, uh, God can use even the, even the worst types of people for, for his will when it comes to Trump. But Trump is, again, he just holds, he, he's just, he, his, his actions and his behavior is so anti what the Bible says. But I see so many Christians that support Trump. You know, I, I'm not over here. Uh, these people it just, when the roles are reversed in these situations, these conservatives love to backtrack on what they say. They like to say, oh, you know, that's not true. It's just, it just 
it's so tiresome for these people to say something like this because then when it's when it's someone on the opposite end when it's them the, the situation is flipped it's different yeah, so also, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I didn't explain that really that well, but I tried. I, I hope you're having fun, by the way, going through every old tweet that I've ever sent to try and do gotcha questions. But if you'd like to have a discussion about my general philosophy or things I've done and say, I don't know, that's 2012, so it's now 2019. Yeah, I'm sure Andrew Neal's having a lot of fun dealing with you, Ben. 19, if you'd like to discuss something I've done and say like the past five years, why don't we do that? How about well, that? Well, because your book is uh, a criticism of uh, how angry America is and how America has to do better. And I'm simply I have trying an entire list out, on my website, sir. Sir, on my list, I have an entire website of I'm dumb, I'm bad things that I've said. I'm simply trying to point out some of the things you, you've and said. Then, Andrew can't even, like, Ben can't even let Andrew ask the question. I feel, I, I don't know if it's because he's fearful of looking stupid once again, and because, you know, this whole interview has just been, just, just been Ben making an ass of himself, but... ...that seemed to me to help to stoke that anger. For example, you said sure. Israelis like to build, Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that, was that includes, dumb? Well, yes, that's a dumb tweet. And not only, but it is also important to mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the Hamas leadership, which, no. by the way, a BBC I've, I've seen is relatively reticent to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to what? do and say, uh, you are correct about the slur on Arabs. It's not all Arabs that want to live in open sewage and blow things up. It's just Palestinians, you went on to say. No, it, no, it's, and, no, and it's then just then the ones said, who take sides against Israel in the Palestinian, Israel -Palestinian Arab conflict. population is rotten to the core. They just can't accept. Andrew Neal is literally saying, you know, Ben, you're being a bigot here, and he just can't accept that fact. Ben cannot accept the fact that he is being called out to his face on his blatant bigotry. He can't handle it. If you can't handle the heat, get the fuck out the kitchen, bitch. He went on to say, no. I'm not going to say things like that in the future. That felt weird coming out of my mouth. Just pretend that I said something better. Hamas, I say by, the yeah, Palestinian I say by Arab population. I say that by poll numbers, they elected Hamas. They elected Hamas. They educate their children in school that Israel should be obliterated, sir. I get No. No, they don't. They don't do that. They don't do that. If you want to read, con you know, honestly, uh, th this is a giant waste of time in the sense that the entire interview is designed for you to shout slogans or old things that I've said at me. I don't. Yep, that's what, that's what he's doing. He's shouting slogans. Shout slogans? What? I don't think Ben Shapiro has been paying attention. Let's see how this forwards the debate. You talk about you talk about undermining the public discourse. It seems to me that simply going through and finding lone things that sound bad out of context and then hitting them with and then hitting people with them is a way for you to make a quick buck on BBC off the fact that I'm popular. To make a quick buck? What? Is this dude legit? Like, is he being real here? To make a quick buck on the BBC? What the fuck is he on about? and no one has ever heard of you. Uh, there are not many bucks of you. <laughs> no one has ever heard of you. Okay, all right. I'm... No. 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 We made it on the BBC, unlike American broadcasting, Mr. Shapiro. Uh, I get, the point you're I'm trying to make seems... is that your words are highly designed to produce the consensus and understanding that the book seems to want to produce. Uh, that's my point, that you write about, you know, Judeo-Christian culture and so on. But so much of what you've said in the past would seem to turn its back on Judeo-Christian culture. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? Uh, oh my God, Ben. Oh my God. Stop acting like a little butthurt boy. Stop acting. Ben, this is so bad. Like, if I did this and I was this famous and I went on TV and made this much of an ass of myself, I would wake up every single day and just be ashamed of this. This is terrible. Ben, you look so dumb here. You can't even answer this dude's questions because your, fee your feelings got hurt. What happened to facts don't care about your feelings? What happened? I just really? asked you a question. And I asked you a question. You failed to answer a single one of mine. Also, right. didn't wasn't he talking about, like, uh, didn't he say that, like, you know, People can say whatever they want, or you can have any opinion you want. Didn't he say that in the interview earlier? Where is that now? Like, what, 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 what? I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you Frankly, just try and I don't answer care. the I don't... Oh, so, <laughs> no, he just said it then. I'm sorry. I thought he said it before. Uh, you know, <laughs> he says that he says that, but then he's going to get up and walk out. I don't frankly give a damn what you you're, think of me since I've new, never heard of you. I don't frankly give a damn because... You... 
I mean, the self-destruction is hard to watch here. It's hard. This is hard. It's hard for me to watch Ben Shapiro make this much of a fool of himself. And I hate this guy. And I've never heard of you until I briefed myself for this. But that's not the issue. You have a <laughs> new book out, and me, it's, an, it's an interesting book. But my point is, your book claims well, that society... Well, it would be nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is... Well, actually, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again, if you would let me just finish the question. Your book no, frankly, claims that society... You no, know see, th and this is proof of what I said earlier. He's too afraid of m m making an ass of, of himself again. He's too afraid he's going to look stupid if Andrew Neil asks him one more question because he's been asking him some really good questions. I mean, I make a lot of videos on like news clips here and, you know, half some of the time, you know, most of the time I say that, you know, like these, especially in America, these mainstream news hosts, they ask some stupid fucking questions. They ask e softball questions, easy questions. They don't ask, uh, you know. They they ask these really super open ended questions uh, that can allow for just any type of answer. And sometimes that's good, but sometimes you need to just hit him with these direct questions that are just in your face. And you know, Ben is just too afraid to continue this interview because he knows that again, he lost a debate that he himself started when it was supposed to be an interview to begin with. Is turning Honestly, back sir? on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What, that it's, what are the values it's turning its back on? See now, he's again. He Andrew Neil's trying to get through the interview like a normal person, but it's Ben Shapiro that has the problem. I, I you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All sir. right. Thank you well, so thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye. <laughs> and then that, that ending. I, I love. I always. I always love the ending. The ending's the the best part. Ben Shapiro literally walks off because his again his 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 little his little baby feelings got hurt. But um, that's gonna be it for this video. It's kind of long. Um, but if you guys like this video, hit that like button. This isn't gonna be something that I'm gonna be doing a lot, revisiting old stuff. Uh, because again, this is from 2019, so it's a little it's a little old now. But um, I just feel like it just it aged so 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 well. Um, hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see more content like this. Press the little bell and turn on the notifications so you guys don't miss an upload.